What's up guys? In this video we are going to talk about dynamic memory. This may be a little bit complex but in the end you will get used to it and you will see that it's very very easy. So yeah, uh, first of all we have to talk about what is not dynamic memory, which is what we have been using. We have been using a static memory. It is called a static memory because you cannot change the size during the execution. So for example, uh, in the previous video we did this book thing, but with this example we are not going to see this well. So if we remove everything we did in the previous video, and for example we declare an integer array of 10 values, let's imagine that in the future uh, this array is a small, like we want more values. So in order to do that, we have to change the size. The problem is that if we use a static memory, we are not allowed to change the size of an static variable. So here comes the, the dynamic memory. Dynamic memory allows us to change the size of a, of a variable during the execution. And how do we how do we use the dynamic memory? First, we have to reserve a, a size of memory. So for example, now here we are reserving 10 integer values, but maybe in the future we want 12, maybe in the future we want 15, and so on. So yeah, we have to reserve that, and then we have to free. So let's just start by uh, declaring a pointer. For dynamic memory, we also need pointers. A pointer is a type of variable which points to a direction in memory. So the direction in memory that we are going to point is the one that we are going to reserve. So for example, now we declare uh, an integer pointer which doesn't point to anything. But let's say that we want to have an array of 12 values. So for that, we are going to say that the array is going to store the direction of a place in memory in which we reserved uh, 10, 10 integer values. So for that, first we have to do this. I will explain everything. This malloc. So yeah, we have here a lot of things. So first of all, what we did here is a cast. If we check this function, this function returns a void. The problem is that I haven't uh, included the library of, the, of this function and now it's wrong. For that, we are going to use the man of malloc and we see that it uses the uh, standard library. Now you see that <laughs> it tells us what it returns. So basically, uh, malloc returns a generic type, which is void pointer. A void pointer is uh, something generic that doesn't have type. So now, like, that's why we are changing the type to an integer, because this variable is of type integer. And the malloc function is a function that reserves memory. So for example, uh, now we reserved 10 integers uh, for this pointer. So what we told uh, malloc is like, hey, I want 10 integer uh, places for my variable. So malloc said, okay, I will give it to you. And now the variable array, the pointer array, is pointing to a direction in memory in which we have those 10 values. So for example, now we could uh, assign values. Let's do it with a for loop. It is going to be easier and faster. So yeah, with this, we assign values to those places in memory. And there's another function in order to do this, which is called calloc. The difference is that reserves the memory and it wipes whatever was before in the memory. With the malloc function, unless you initialize the value as we did here, you are going to have random values that were before. But with the calloc function, you, you are sure that the, that the memory is going to be wiped before you use it. So yeah, if we now try to compile... Oh wow, it's telling errors. Yeah, because I changed this to the calloc call. It was like this. And now we execute it and nothing is printed because as always I forgot to print. We are going to say in the same for loop that we want to also print the value in uh, that 
place. So if we compile and we execute, we see that it's the same. This example wasn't very useful because this is the same as doing this. But yeah, maybe in so at some moment in our program, we want a third, like uh, 10 more additional values. So what we can do is reallocate the memory. So for that, we are going to use the realloc uh, function. So we say that, okay, now we are going to, put, uh, to point to a direction in memory in which, uh, well, I didn't say it, but uh, this means that this is a int pointer, like we are casting to an int pointer. And we say that realloc the same uh, the place it was before and changing the size. So for example, let's say that now we want 15 uh, places size of int. This is very important because the functions size of returns the number of bytes that int uses. So this is very important to use because if you just put here 15, this is going to be wrong, but because the computer uh, is multiplying 15 by 4. Like, if you know the size, you could put here 4 or whatever, but maybe uh, your computer doesn't use 4 bytes for an integer. Like, you have to know that. So, if we now do this, we don't have any mistake, and let's copy again this array, and let's... Uh, compile and execute and yeah you now see that we have more values in our variable so this is why it's very useful the dynamic memory because maybe during your execution is not enough to set uh, I don't know array of 100 values maybe that's too much and you want to optimize the use of memory with this you are optimizing the use of memory because you know that hey I just want 15 values, hey, I just want 12 values. Another thing is that it's not okay to do this in array i, for example. Well, now i is not declared because we did it here, but let's imagine that we have a variable and in that variable uh, there is the new size of the array that we want. We cannot do this, like c is not going to allow, a, allow you to set a, a static variable using um, a static variable for the size <laughs> but with the with the dynamic memory you can do this call using here a variable imagine that yeah i has 15 yeah you can use it i has 13 you can use it uh, 200 you can use it this is a very nice way to optimize memory and yeah another thing is that you have to handle errors and um, yeah, at the beginning I hated doing this, but it's very useful and you should do it. Why? Because maybe this, this function uh, returns an error. So here you have to, oh, not here. Here you have to check if the array is still null, if the variable is still null. In that case, you close the program, you do whatever, but you have to handle the error. Another thing with the dynamic memory is that you have to free. Now, we executed the program and we didn't free anything. So that memory is reserved and the computer cannot use it. Like, you cannot use that memory with, uh, again because no one freed that memory. So you have to do free array. And in this case, using this, you are going to allow the computer to reuse the, the memory. This may sound stupid now because you say, hey, you just use 15 by 4, 60 bytes. Like, that's nothing. But yeah, when you have big programs in which you use 3 gigabytes or something like that, if you don't allow the computer to use those 3 gigabytes, your computer is going to be very slow and you will have to restart the computer. So yeah, that was everything. Like, in order to free, you have to use just yes, free and put here the pointer. And yeah, that's it. If you compile and if you execute, everything works and yeah, <laughs> that's it. I hope you understood the concept of dynamic memory, the concept of optimizing the use of memory. And yeah, this is the beautiful things of C, that you can optimize everything. <laughs> so yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. 
I hope you liked it. If so, give it a like, subscribe, and see you in the next one. Don't forget to go and check my website in which I talk about trading and cryptocurrencies and all that stuff for a very cheap price. Mm -hmm. Ay.